Hello everyone, have a nice day to you. Today I want to start my CCNA Technology Series Online Training Class Chapter 01. This time I want to present in English language because I got the same request from my audience who cannot understand Burmese language. They requested me to record in the English language. So this time I decided to have some of my lectures in English. Before I start the class, I would like to introduce myself a bit. Okay, by the way, I want to apologize to you in advance. Since I am not a native speaker, my English might not be very fluent and I might have some mistakes in my English speaking. So, if I have some mistakes, please forgive me. I would like to apologize to you in advance for my language. Okay, as you see in the PowerPoint slide, you can see that I am Pyo. My full name is Pyo Pyo Hain. People used to call me, people call me Pyo. My family, my colleagues, and my friends call me Pyo. I am graduated with a Bachelor of Computer Technology Honors from University of Computer Studies, Yango. And I am also the Microtech Certified Trainer and Consultant as well. Currently, I am working in Information Beam Company Limited as the Director. iBeam was founded in since 2005. iBeam is the one of the network training schools and SI companies in Myanmar. I was, te I was teaching the Cisco courses, CCNA courses, Network Fundamental courses as the instructor, as the tra trainer since 2005. After that, I went to Singapore and I worked in two Singapore companies as the network engineer in NCS and Nera telecommunication. Mainly I worked, I supported to Singtel network, Singtel co network. Then I came back to Myanmar in 2013 and I worked in Yedanabo Delhi Port as the system integration department manager, deputy department manager, and I worked in Kinetic Myanmar Technology as the enterprise ISP manager. As an engineer, I got some professional networking, professional certificates such as Cisco certificates, Juniper certificates, and Microtech certifications. I I got the CCNA routing switching, CCNB routing switching, CCIP, and I partially I partially have done CCIE routing switching written only, but I haven't done the CCIE routing switching lab yet. For the Juniper, I have finished. Uh, I took the I took the exam of the JNCIA Junos and JNCDA, and I passed the exams. And I got the Microtech certifications, and I became the Microtech certified trainer. Also, this is my brief introduction about me. And today, the topics I am going to talk is switching and VLAN. So in this switching and VLAN, what I will be talking about, what topics, what subtopics I will be talking about, what is switching, what are the layer 2, layer 3 switching functions, and VLANs, and we will do the lab, VLAN lab together. I hope you can follow me well. Okay, we will start our lecture. I will start to talk about data link layer. Layer 2. In OSI 7 layer, data link layer is the layer 2. Data link layer is the communication point between physical layer and upper layers. It is responsible to deliver the data to upper layers and send the data from upper layers onto the physical layers. 
it is the delivery of the data frames. Creating the data frames and do the error checking, checksum, and flow control on the physical links. In data link layer, there are two sub-layers, which are the logical link control and media access control. Logical link control is for creating the frames, deliver the frames to upper layers and error checking, flow control mechanisms, and encapsulating the frames. MAC layer is the attaching the physical layer to layer addresses, layer to MAC addresses into the frames and loading the frame into the physical layer via the network interface cut. Data link layer protocols are Ethernet IEEE 802.3, in one technology, serial link, HDLC encapsulation, PPP frame, PPP ORE, and frame relay, X.25, ISDN, etc. As the devices switch in Ethernet network, switch and bridges are layer 2 devices. By default, because they learn the MAC address and they build the MAC address, table in the switches and bridges and then they do the forwarding based on the layer 2 physical MAC addresses. That's why switch and bridges are layer 2 devices. LANs and WAN technologies are classified according to their physical layer transmission, media and layer 2 encapsulation protocol. For example, Ethernet used the IEEE 802.3 standard and in serial links Point-to-point point uh, point serial link, they use the encapsulation of the HDLC or PPP. In ADSL, they use the PPP OE encapsulation. And in frame relay narrow, they use the Cisco frame relay encapsulation, X.25, something like that. So, land and one technology are the, 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 the differences, the physical layer 2 and layer 1 can be classified by the layer 2 and layer 1. They are physical LAN and 1 will be differentiated from the layer 1 and layer 2. We will talk about the IEEE 802.3 Ethernet frame format. <clears throat> In Ethernet frame format, the preamble start frame Delimiter, destination address, source address, type, data, path, checksum. They are the fields in the Ethernet and Triple E 802.3 Ethernet frame format. Preamble. Preamble consists of the seven bytes, all of the form of 1010 alternatively. When we see the preamble, we can start to know that oh, it is studying the frame. A frame is coming. It is used by the receiver to allow it to establish the bit synchronization. So what is the function of the SFT? SFT is the start frame dem delimiter. It's a single byte. 10, 10, 10 and then end with the 1, 1. We can see we can know that it is the start of the frame. After SFD, it will start the destination MAC address. And then destination address. Destination address is the physical MAC address. It is the 48 bit. 8 bit is 1 byte. So in bytes, it is the 6 bytes destination MAC address where we want to go in the network. This is the destination MAC address. And another is a source MAC address. It is the 48-bit 6-byte MAC address where the frame is originated from. And the length and ether type field is only one which differs from 802.3 and Ethernet 2. In 802.3, it indicates as the number of bytes the frame payload. Frames must be the at least 64 bytes long. And data is the, the protocol data unit which is carried from the upper layers. And then the checksum is for checking the 
data integrity of the frame. Switching. By default, switches and bridges are functioning as layer 2, the darling layer devices. Bridges are software based and switches are hardware based. They have the intelligence of keeping MAC addresses, layer 2 physical address table. Both switches and bridges can still forward the layer 2 broadcast. When they start to learn the MAC address, when they don't have the MAC addresses in the table, they need to broadcast to learn the MAC addresses. They cannot manage the broadcast domain. Broadcast domain means the area which can receive the broadcast frame called the broadcast domain. But after learning the MAC address, we know which interface is which MAC address from which VLAN. Each interface parts of the switches have one collision domain. Collision domain means the area which data can be collided due to the sharing the same media like best topology or the connecting with the HEP or the repeater per each bot. So collision domain for the layer one net layer HEP connecting with the HEP or connecting with the repeater, they cannot divide the collision domain yet. They need to switch on the CSMA CD. But switch, every port is one collision domain. For example, if a switch has the active 12 interface ports, the switches have the 12 collision domains. The switch ports can operate in the full duplex mode, which can turn off the CSMA CD. CSMA CD, I will explain you in the next slides. CSMACD is the IEEE 802.3 standard feature. How layer 2 MAC address table work? According to the diagram, four PCs are connecting to the switch faster than 0 slash 1, 2, 3, 4. And then in the switch, they built the MAC address table and first that port number 0 slash 1 by default VLA 1 MAC address is kept in PC1 MAC address PC2 MAC address is recorded in first then as 0 slash 2 VLA 2 0 0 1 C 12 AB 9 7 PC3 MAC address is recorded on port number 0 slash 3 VLA 1 0 0 2 D 1 2 6 5 A 2 AF etc. Then if you want to send the frames after building the MAC address table, the PC can send to each other with the uniqueness frame directly. Okay, just now we were talking about the CSMA CD. Now we will learn about what is CSMA CD. CSMA CD means carrier sense multiple access collision detection. According to the name, there are three separate functions, carrier sense, multiple access, collision detection. This is for avoiding the data collisions in the network. Three functions according to the name, carrier sense. Carrier sense means the host node on the network listens on the shared media if the line is free or busy. Multiple access means once the media is free, multiple devices can access at the same time. Then, what happens after if two hosts are listening at the same time and once it is free, they send the frame? Then they will collide. Collision detection means when two host nodes send the data on the shared media simultaneously, the collision will occur. Then the two sending nodes will receive a notification signal that alarm the collision. They stop sending data and wait random period of time by setting a timer and counting down the timer. Once the timer counts to zero, the host node can resend the data by send 
uh, by using the CSMACD again. Here I give the sample scenario how CSMACD is working, operates. Host A is checking whether media is free or not. At the same time, host C is checking the media is free or not also. They are sharing the same media. That means carrier sense. Okay, host A, once the media is free, host A also sends a frame to the destination. They still broadcast. Host C is also sending the frame. And then, when they send it directly, then what is happening? They happen the collision. This is called multiple access with collision detection. So what they do to avoid the collision? Once they detect the collision, they back off. And they wait a random timer to resend it again. Okay, they, re they wait a random timer. One is five, one is six. This is collision avoidance. Five, six, five, four, three, two, one. Who start to finish first? Host A finished first and host C is not finished first. So who wins? Host A wins. So host A start to send. Host C need to wait again. The winner starts to send and the, the loser need to wait again. Host A might be sending to finished ending and then after that, Hosi can send wait wait again until the line is free again and send the data. This is how CSMACD is operating. Switching functions. The basic switching function is address learning. Address learning is the Mac. Table is empty when it firstly turned on. When a host is sending a frame to destination, it records the source MAC address in the MAC table. It sends the broadcast frame FFFFFFFFF. F means 1111, all one. In hexadecimal, F means FFFFF means broadcast. To look for the destination MAC address. The destination host which is hearing the broadcast will reply the MAC address and record it in the MAC table. This is called address learning. And forwarding. When a host is sending to destination, it looks up the MAC table to know the exact location of the destination host. If MAC table has the destination host MAC address, it will forward it. The frame. And another thing is loop avoidance. If there is the redundant physical link, it will help to have the redundancy, but it can cause layer 2 broadcast loop and unicast flooding. To avoid the layer 2 loop, spanning tree protocol is the solution for solving the loop issue. Okay, we know we learn about the collision domains and broadcast domain. So, according to the diagram, how many collision domains and how many broadcast domains are there? Router is connected with a switch in a network and then another subnet router is connected with a HAP. The switch can divide the collision domain according to the number of its active ports. The HAP cannot to the collision domain. The router can divide the collision domain. The broadcast packet cannot forward it across the router. So how many collision domain? Collision domain is that the switch has the switch to, to three PC is a one, two, three. Switch to router is one port, that's a four. And then the HAP to router and all the switches that have is a one do collision domain. So totally five collision domain. And then how many 
broadcast domain there is a one router and two separate subnets so it is a two broadcast domain so in this diagram five collision domains and two broadcast domain HEP and repeaters cannot separate the collision domain yet switches every switch port is one collision domain router can separate the broadcast domain We talk about the basic layer 2 switching and how switching works, what is collision domain, what is broadcast domain. In Cisco switches and in other switches, there is the, another cool feature is virtual local area network. So, what is local area network means? LAN means single broadcast domain. By default, the switches have only one LAN. Creating multiple VLANs in switches means multiple broadcast domains, multiple subnets in switches. In this diagram, the switch is connecting with the two VLANs, the blue color and the orange color. Blue color is the VLAN 1, 192.16.1.0, one broadcast domain, one subnet. VLAN 2, the orange color is the VLAN 2, 192.16.2.0, it is another separate subnet. So the broadcast packet will be received within the single VLAN only, same VLAN only. The broadcast packet will not forward to another VLAN. What is the benefits of using VLANs? We can reduce the CPU overhead on each device by reducing the number of devices that receive the, uh, that receive the each broadcast frame. And to reduce the segregator, though, they cannot hear the broadcast domain to another separate. So they receive the frame copies only to the same VLAN host. So the broadcast packet will not go through the another VLAN so it can reduce the security risk. To improve the security for the host, there's a sensitive data by keeping those hosts on a separate VLAN. And we can create more flexible designs that group the user by department, by groups that work. Maybe the marketing department, one VLAN, management department, one VLAN, Training department, one VLAN, meet, etc. And also, VLAN can be created according to the physical location. Also, this is according to the requirement in our office and networks. To solve the problems more quickly, because the failure of the domain problem, the same set of the devices as the same in the broadcast domain. To reduce the workload of the spanning tree by limiting the VLAN in the single switches. So those are the benefits of the VLAN. Access ports and trunk ports. Access ports. Access ports is the end user devices. End devices will connect to access ports. Access port is the port which is belonging to the only one single VLAN except for the voice VLAN. Single access port belong do can be belong in Cisco switches. There can be only one exceptional case is data VLAN and voice VLAN can be existed in Cisco switches. Other ports one access VLAN will belong to only one single VLAN. And user devices will be connected to access ports. The trunk ports. The trunk port is the port that can carry the multiple VLAN we call the trunk ports. By default, Cisco switches allow all the VLANs on trunk ports. If we want to allow only for the specific VLAN also, we can do this. The trunk port, we, can, we should connect switch to switch, switch to router, and switch to server. VLAN tagging. VLAN tagging is a VLAN need to be marked. Tag means marked, flagged, tagged. 
on triangling so that where the traffic will go to which villa. For example, on the triangling, we orange color is the VLAN 10 and blue color is the VLAN 20. And then the switch 1 also have the VLAN 10 and the VLAN 20. The switch 2 also have the VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. So the frame need to be marked where the destination want to go to which VLAN. If the frame is want to go to the VLAN 20, should mark as the VLAN 20. If the destination is want to go to VLAN 10, the, the frame should be marked as the VLAN 10. So that's called the VLAN tagging. <clears throat> VLAN tagging method encapsulation protocol. There are two VLAN tagging encapsulation protocol, which are the ISL and IEEE 802.1Q. ISL, Cisco Proprietary Encapsulation Protocol. Nowadays, Cisco no longer use this protocol in new iOS. They support IEEE 802.1Q trunking protocol only, so we will skip this. Uh, uh, we will skip talking about the ISL in this lecture. We will talk more about on IEEE 802.1Q more. IEEE 802.1Q is the it insert the an extra 4 byte 802.1Q VLAN header into the original frame header. And out of 4 byte, 12 bits are for VLAN ID. So 2 power 12 equal to 4096. Therefore, total VLAN will be 0 to 4095 will be able to exist in the switch. According to the diagram, it will insert the 802.1Q trunking protocol between the source MAC address and the type. And then it inserts the 802.1Q header. And now we will talk about the dynamic trunking protocol. There are four switch, every switch port has the four modes as switchboard mode SS, switchboard mode trunk, switchboard mode dynamic auto, switchboard mode dynamic desirable. Dynamic trunking protocol auto negotiates the operational status of the port with the other end with the other end of the ports. Here I think you will understand by looking at this table. If one end of the switch port is SS port and if another end of the switch port is SS port, its operational status will be the SS link. If one end of the port is SS port, if another end is the trunk lock port, it will not work, it will not be used. If one end of the link is dynamic auto and if another end is SS port, it will work as the SS port. If another one end is the dynamic desirable and another end is the SS bot, it will be SS bot. For the trunk bot, if one end is trunk and another end is the trunk, it will be operating as the trunk bot. If one end is the trunk and another end is the dynamic auto, it will work as the dynamic auto. If one end is the dynamic desirable and if one and another end is the trunk, it will be the working operating as the trunk. If one end is the dynamic auto and dynamic auto, it will be as the as a spot. It will be if one end is a dynamic auto and if one end is the as a spot, it will be as a spot. If one end is the dynamic auto and if one end is the dynamic desirable, it will be trunk. Dynamic desirable is actively asking to be a trunk. So if combined with the desirable, it will be more likely to be the trunk. If one end is the dynamic desirable and another end is the trunk, it will be the trunk. If one end is the dynamic desirable and it is the dynamic auto, it will be the trunk. Desirable, desirable, also the trunk. <coughs> In the VLAN routing, for routing between two VLANs, if we don't do the in the VLAN routing, 
The VLAN traffic will go to the same VLAN only and then the different VLAN cannot be routed. For routing between two VLAN, we need end of VLAN routing. For communicating between different VLAN, we need a layer 3 devices, such as either a router or a multi-layer switch, layer 3 switch. There are two, two methods, router on a stick and switch virtual interface. In this lecture, we will talk about the router on a stick. Let's see in the diagram, the switch has two VLAN, VLAN 10 and VLAN 20, but the switch is connecting to the router with only one physical link. Router first the net zero set zero is connecting to the switch. So there is no two interface, one in there is no separate interface for VLAN, different VLAN also. They are using the single interface. So how we are going to do this? It is impossible to have the multiple physical interface ports. If we have the handwrap VLAN, we will not be able to have the handwrap physical parts on the router also. So how would we you do the inter VLAN routing? So to do this, the router needs to support 802.1Q protocol so that it can route multiple VLAN traffic and we can create the sub interfaces on the interface. And we need to do encapsulation with the 802. Encapsulation 802.1Q and need to specify the specific VLAN IP on the physical interface. Okay, SVI. How to do the SVI? SVI is the when we have the layer 3 switch. Layer 3 router or multi uh, layer 3 switches we can create the multiple logical vlan interface on the layer 3 switches for vlan 10 interface vlan 10 for vlan 20 interface vlan 20 and then route the traffic between the vlan by setting the gateway ib of the svi on the end devices this is what how svi do now we will talk about the creating VLAN, VLAN configuration. We can create the VLAN in the privilege mode, go into the privilege mode, go enter into the global configuration mode, and then VLAN 2, and then we can name the VLAN as the name marketing. We need to assign SS port, which port is in which VLAN. Interface FA0 slash 1, here we put the we don't put the dynamic auto or something. We put the direct access mode, switch for mode access. We will not use the dynamic DDP negotiation and then we put the access port directly and then switch for access VLAN 2. It is at, at the first done as your slash 1 is in VLAN 2. Trunk configuration in the Manual on mode is the we configure FA interface gigabit Ethernet zero slash one in layer three switches we need to configure switch port trunk encapsulation dot one q and then on mode means that we don't use the DTP and then we use the manual mode switch port mode trunk directly. Dynamic auto means interface gigabit Ethernet zero slash one switch port mode dynamic auto. Dynamic desirable is the interface gigabit Ethernet zero slash one switch port mode dynamic desirable. VLAN verification commands. If you want to see the brief information about the VLAN, you can show see show VLAN brief verify VLAN trunking protocol. Show interface trunk. Show and you if you want to see the operational status of the Switch port, you can use the gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 1 switch port also. Router on the stick configuration. Here, you 
are connecting with the switch. Router is connecting with the switch in the first file system. Let's go slash zero. You don't need to give any IP address on the main interface of fast Ethernet 0 slash 0. You just need to do no shut. Enable the interface. And then you create the sub interfaces under the fast Ethernet 0 slash 0. For easier to memorize, I create the sub interface number and VLAN number the same. It doesn't need to be the same. But it is better to be the same because for easier memory, easier to recognize. So here I created first is the net zero slash zero dot two encapsulation dot one q two. IP address one nine two one six eight dot two dot two five four two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot zero, etc. Okay, we have talking about the theories and then how to do the lab. We will start to do the lab. Our lab topology will be as shown as in the slide. There are three switches. And then all the PCs are connecting to the switches. Fast Ethernet 0 slash the PC which are connecting with the fast Ethernet 0 slash 4 are belonging into the VLAN 2 training VLAN. Here, PC, PC01 is connecting to fast Ethernet 0 slash 4, switch 1. PC04 is connecting to the fast Ethernet 0 slash 4. It is the yellow color VLAN 2 training to 192.168.2 network. The gateway will be the 192.168.2.254. And then the blue color VLAN is the ID VLAN. All for easy to com easier to configure, I configure all the fast Ethernet 0 slash 5 ports are in IT VLAN. All the fast Ethernet 0 slash 6 ports in switches are in management VLAN. VLAN 3 ID VLAN is the 192.168.3.0 network. Gateway will be the 3.254. Green color management VLAN will be connecting with the first the net zero slash six. The network is one nine two one six eight or four dot zero VLAN four. Gateway will be four dot two five four. The router will have the first the net zero slash zero dot two dot one Q VLAN two is IMB is two dot two five four. First the net zero slash zero dot three dot one Q VLAN three is the one nine two one six eight or three dot two five four. First is the net zero slash zero dot four dot one Q VLAN four is one nine two one six eight or four dot two five four. Okay, let's start to do the lab now. As I explained to you, there are three switches. Switch one, switch two, switch three. All the fast Ethernet 0 slash 4 are in VLAN 2. All the fast Ethernet 0 slash 5 ports are in VLAN 3. All the fast Ethernet 0 slash 6 ports are in VLAN 4. The router, we will, in the VLAN routing, we will use the router on a stick and then we will create the SEP interfaces. We will create the SEP interfaces. Fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. VLAN 2, VLAN 3, VLAN 4. We will do like this. I have already assigned the IMP address as shown in the diagram now. PC0, 192.6.2.2, yellow color. PC3, 192.6.2.2. PC6, 192.6.2.3. The gateway IP address will be the 192.6.2.254. The blue color, first is the next row slash for PC1, 3.1 slash 24. PC4, 3.2 slash 24. PC7, 3.3 slash 24. Gateway will be the 192.6.3.254. And then... VLAN 4, uh, PC uh, green color, first the net zero slash 6 ports are PC 2, 4.1, 4.2, 4 4.2, 4.3, gateway will be there, 4.254. Here, I already assigned the IMP in here. Okay, let's start from the 
switch one, go to the command line, enable configure terminal, host name, switch one. We will create the VLAN here. VLAN 2 name training exit VLAN 3 name ID exit VLAN 4 name management exit we will let's verify what we have configured show VLAN brief so there are three VLANs we created. VLAN 2 is the training VLAN, VLAN 3 is the ID VLAN, and VLAN 4 is the management VLAN. So the same thing we will do in the switch 2 and switch 3 also. Before we do it, let's do the right mem for saving the configuration. Okay, we will do in switch 2, go to the command line, enable configure terminal. Oh, wrong. We need to wait because we did not. I need to disable the domain lookup. Now I wrongly enter the wrong command, so it will be taking so long. So I can go to the switch 3 first. I don't want to wait for the switch 2. Okay, configure terminal, host name, switch 2, VLAN 2. Name training VLAN 3 name IT exit exit VLAN 4 name management. Let's verify show VLAN brief. Okay, we have created three VLANs. Let's do the right man for saving the configuration. Let's go back to the switch to again. Configure terminal, whose name, switch 02, VLAN 2, name, training, VLAN 3, name, IT, VLAN 4, name, management. Exit. Exit. Let's verify. Show VLAN brief and do right mem. Let me check. I wrongly configured the switch to it should be the switch three host name. Switch the three. And we need to assign the fast as u slash four ports four on switch one also belong to the VLAN two five on switch one belong to the VLAN three six on switch one belong to the VLAN four. So configure terminal interface fast as u slash four switch port mode access. Switch port SS VLAN 2. Interface fast is done as 0 slash 5. Switch port mode SS. Switch port SS VLAN 3. Interface fast is done as 0 slash 6. Switch port mode SS. Switch port access VLAN 4. Show VLAN brief. Here you will see first the net 0 slash 4 is in VLAN training. First the net 0 slash 5 is in ID. First the net 0 slash 6 is in management. We will do the same thing in switch 2 and switch 3. Configure terminal interface fast is done as zero slash four switch port mode access switch port access VLAN two 
in der Bildweise dann als u slash 5 switch bot mode ss switch bot ss vlan 3 in der face fasi dann als u slash 6 switch bot mode ss switch bot ss vlan 4 let me write mem and let's verify show vlan brief Okay, fast in der 0 slash 4 ist in Training VLAN, fast in der 0 slash 5 ist in ID VLAN, fast in der 0 slash 6 ist in Management VLAN. So, let's continue to switch 3. <coughs> Configure Terminal, in der Phase fast in der 0 slash 4, switch board mode SS, switch board SS. VLAN 2 exit in the face fast the net 0 slash 5 switch bot mode SS switch bot SS VLAN 3 in the face fast the net 0 slash 6 switch bot mode SS switch bot SS VLAN 4 exit Right, man. Show VLAN brief. Okay. So let's start. Whether we can bring to the same VLAN or not. This PC is 192.162.1. Bing 192.162.1. Can we ping or not? We still cannot ping. Why? Because gigabit internet switch to switch connection are not trying mode yet. How do you know that? Let me see. Show interface GID. GIG 1 slash 1. Sorry, show interface GIG 1 slash 1 switch bot. It is the static, the operational mode is static SS, by default dynamic auto. So it is not the trunk mode yet. So if, so if it is not the trunk mode, show VLAN brief. First, the gigabit the 1 slash 1 is currently in VLAN 1 only so this link only belong to the vlan one so vlan 2 traffic will not pass through so what should we do this actually this gigabit internet one slash one should be the trunk bot to carry vlan 2 vlan 3 vlan 4 information so we need to be make the link to be trunk between the switches so I will do the manual switch for more trunk in this lab. Configure terminal interface GIG1 slash 1 switch bot mode trunk. But actually, if this link is the trunk, if this link is the auto, as I explained in the PowerPoint slides, the GDB will negotiate it and then it operated to be the trunk. So. So let me see whether it is true or not. How did it be the work? Show interface GIG one slash one switch bot. Okay, now operational mode became trunk. Because this is the manual trunk, this is the another switch to gigabit and as you slash one is the auto. So trunk and auto became the operational mode is the trunk because of the DDB dynamic trunking protocol. Let's go to switch to configure terminal interface GID one slash two 
I will not do the uh, trunking mode on Kikabi than the one slash one because it is already become the trunk. Fish pot mode trunk. If this link is trunk and if this uh, switch three gigabit then I want slash two is the auto trunk and auto also will become the trunk. So we don't need to reconfigure in gigabit then as one slash two. It will be the trunk automatically because of the DDB. But we need to set the manual trunk mode on the first Ethernet zero slash one, which is connecting to the router. So we need to set the manual trunk mode on first Ethernet zero slash one of the switch according to the topology. Interface FA zero slash one switch port mode trunk. This one I have configured. Right, man. Okay, let's see the show interface trunk. Here, gigabit is then a one slash one and one slash two is the trunk. Show interface trunk. Gigabit is then a one slash one is the trunk. How about on the switch two? Show interface trunk. Gigabit is then a one slash two is the trunk. But here we did not see the first Ethernet 0 slash 1 is the trunk because the router is router first Ethernet 0 slash 0 is not configured yet. So it is still not up yet. So first Ethernet 0 slash 1 cannot be seen as a trunk on switch 2. So now we have configured the trunk on the switches. So the same VLAN traffic between the switches should be able to ping each other so let me try again to ping to the same VLAN this IP is the IP config 2.1 so let me ping to the same VLAN traffic Uh, there's no 2.4 okay 2.2 there's no 2.4 in the network okay this one IB config this is the 3.1 so ping 192.168.3.2 Ping 192.168.3.3. Same VLAN traffic can pass through the trunk link. How about this one? Ping 192.168.4.2.4.3. But well, let me test whether they can ping to the different VLAN or not. Ping 192.168.2.2.4.2.2.2.2. Still cannot ping yet. Different VLAN cannot be able to ping yet. But we already able to ping. We have already done communicating between the same VLAN. So what we still need to do, we need to configure the router on a stick in the VLAN routing. They still cannot ping to the gateway also because the gateway need to be configured on the router. So we still cannot ping the gateway yet also. Let's start to configure on the router and let's start to configure the inter VLAN routing on the router. <coughs> Okay, let's go to the router, command line, enable, configure terminal, host name, I'm being, router, interface, first Ethernet 0 slash 0, 
we will shut down on the main interface no shut and then we will create the sub interface interface first and then 0 slash 0 dot 2 encapsulation door one queue this interface is for vlan 2 and then we will give the IMB address of the vlan 2 gateway 192.168.2.254 255.255.255.0 and then we will go to the FRC Ethernet 0 slash 0 dot 3 which is for VLAN 3 and that's why we will encapsulate with the encapsulation dot 1 Q 3 this VLAN ID need to be the correct and I will set the IP address of the VLAN 3 gateway 192.168.3.254.255.255.255.0. Exit. Interface FA 0 slash 0 0.4, which is for VLAN 4 step interface. So we need to encapsulation with the, we need to check the VLAN 4 encapsulation dot 1Q 4. And then we will set the IMB address of the VLAN 4 gateway IP 192.168.4.254.255.255.255.0. Exit. Exit. Let's verify the show IP interface brief. So we will see that first is the 0 slash 0 physical app line protocol is up. First is the 0 slash 0 0.2. Fast is the net zero slash zero dot three three dot two five four fast is the net zero slash zero dot four four dot four dot two five four. Let me see the show IP route common. They are three thoroughly connected route although two dot zero network is thoroughly connected with the fast is the net zero slash zero dot two. One ninety one sixty dot three dot zero slash twenty four is the first that connected with the first the net zero slash zero dot three. One ninety one sixty dot four dot zero is directly connected with the first the net zero slash zero dot four. Let's do the right man. Okay, we have done the intervlan routing, so we should be able to ping between different VLAN. Okay. So IP config, this is the VLAN2 host. So VLAN2 host to VLAN4, 192.168.4.3. We should be able to ping now. For the first time, there will be some request timeout. And now, TTL is 127. It means that it will it hop to the one router. It cross over one router, 128. Minus one when I mean, it is passing through the one router, so that's why DDL is decreased decrease to one, decrement by one. So now in the VLAN routing also working. Okay, this is the VLAN configuration and router, how the VLAN was, how in the VLAN routing. The method by using the method of the router on a stick. You can practice according to my lab also. Okay, today we have done our lecture. I hope you will understand about the, what is switching, what is VLAN, why we are using VLAN, why we, uh, how to do the VLAN configuration. I want you to practice uh, the VLAN configuration at your home also. While you are doing the lab configuration, VLAN configuration, if you have any difficulties, you can come to comment on this video training video. We will upload the video training in our YouTube channel, Information Bing. And we will also upload the video training in our Information Being Facebook group also. If you want to get the latest update of our video training, you can subscribe our channel. And we are welcome to anyone who are willing to join to our Facebook group also. You can share your technical knowledges and you can ask any technical question also. We will answer you and other networkers in the group will answer you also. 
It is a networking community group. I hope you will enjoy it. Uh, if you want to send a private email to me and then ask that question to me, you can send email directly to me also. You can send me at pio at informationbeam.net. Okay, that's for today. Thanks for your attention. I will continue to upload next lectures for CCNA technology series also. Have a nice day to you all.